Hello and welcome again to The Kick. My name is Kyle Eason with Inception Integrated Marketing. We do branding, identity, content marketing, and software development. So happy to be here today. Our show is presented by Mile High House. We're here at a beautiful location today on a beautiful November day, uh, Battery 621. And we're in the Something Independent Lounge this morning. Uh, I'd like to thank some of the folks here at Battery 621 on the first floor, Black Dog Digital, Pet Pod, Society, Weston Snowboards and Snowboards, excuse me, and Lark Burger. Uh, in addition to something independent, so we're really glad to be here. It's a fantastic workspace, and uh, very, very happy to be here at Battery 621. Uh, special guest today, Lizelle Van Buren. Lizelle is founder and CEO of Women Who Startup, uh, amazing organization that has really caught fire recently, uh, as well as founder and CEO of effectively. What are some of the milestones, Lizelle, that uh, brought you here to this point today here in Denver? I, I guess I got here by just chipping away at my career and um, figuring out what I love, what people love, and how to combine that mm -hmm. and how to fuel my passion as well as you know, doing something for people um, that uh, is high value and high mm -hmm. impact. Um, mm -hmm. That's an interesting point you bring up because I know a lot of people struggle with that, trying to find that that recipe and so what was it uh, about your experience that helped you to get there so maybe saving someone else uh, some of those a few of those left turns how did you finally find wow this is the intersection between my passion and what the world needs and I'm able to make a living doing this I think that's one of the toughest things for most people is figuring out how to get unstuck from having a job mm -hmm. and making a living but passionately working on things that is inspiring, that is fueling your creative juices, and that also has um, you sound about your moral compass. So aligning all those things is really difficult mm -hmm. for a lot of people because sometimes you just have to put food on the table. Sometimes you have to kind of um, focus on passion, but maybe there's not a lot of money involved in that project. So figuring out to align the two um, has its challenges. Um, figuring out that I was passionate about being a creative, passionate about technology, passionate about people and how they use technology, that quickly started to resonate with me like, whoa, I love this. It gave me a kick. I love this, right? I, like, I love uh, figuring out um, how to solve a problem for people. I like taking it to market and I like really understanding how people use it and why and why not. Mm -hmm. And so it was obviously um, uh, important in, in the backdrop of my career. And so that's how I learned uh, that I love growth, I love marketing, I love product development, I love um, people <laughs> and how they use technology and how they don't and why they don't and why they do and figuring out that. But I, I'm also, I'm also, I'm a bit of an introvert extrovert. I can flip flop in a day probably about a million times. I like to um, really figure people out, understand environments, and then analyze how can I contribute? Whether that's technology, whether that's community, whether that's impact, whether that's creativity, whatever you can apply. But I was also, I think, at an early age, I knew I was creative. I painted since I was very young. I performed on stage since I was four years yeah, old. Tell us more about that, being on stage. Sure. So I think the first performance I ever did in my entire life was a ballet concert. Uh, I was like four years old and I convinced at least six ballerinas to hide with me under a table. And so we were very late for our performance. So I think right then and there, I knew that I was creative. Sure, I enjoyed dancing. But um, again, back to the rebel part, I convinced yeah. a lot of people Some leadership to delay, there, yeah. <laughs> to delay um, a little concert. And I'm, I think my mom was not exactly impressed, but I thought to this day, it's kind of quite hilarious. What really stood out to me was this sort of fear killing that you'd done over the years. You really faced a lot of fears that, have, mm -hmm. that hold a lot of people back their entire lives. Oh, yeah. Being on stage, music, immigrating, dealing with language issues, mm -hmm. uh, becoming an entrepreneur eventually. Um, and striking out on your own, trying mm -hmm. to take an uh, unconventional path. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just made you into kind of the very strong, bold kind of leader that you are today in many ways. It seems Thank like you. that's contributed to that. Um, so getting, looking back again, you've talked a little bit about those things that I think are 
you know, do comprise your kick, but um, I think we may not have hit some of the top highlights of your career or what kind of brought you here. Uh, you had your nine-year career then. Uh, after that, it seems like it's been a succession of uh, startups of various kinds, and maybe you could just kind of give us a quick highlight of what brought you from there to here. Yeah, so a nine-year career in a technology company is, is a long time for someone like me. Um, I think both of us may have been loyal for too long, and that was okay. I learned a lot while I worked um, uh, in that space and with the people that I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it was easy and sometimes it was fun and sometimes it really wasn't, um, but you learn from that. So at the end of 2011, um, I was no longer at a company with a um, reliable paycheck and I was not sure what the hell I was gonna do. Um, but I had just wrapped up my MBA. I came out of that experience creating MSpot, which was my very first company. You have to create a company when you work on an MBA. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, but it's very encouraged. And so when I was out on my own finally, January 1st, 2012, I actually had an established company and I was really convinced that I just need to work with small businesses. Um, my focus is the SMB, you know, I'm going after the heart of America. I want to learn from SMBs, <laughs> whether it's brick and mortar or wellness clinics or retail good um, e-commerce products. I, I helped the works and it was great. It was a great experience. Um, that year was a fundamental year in my career. One, I started to really, 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 unlike before, really plug in to the overarching and overall Colorado startup communities, whether it was Boulder, Denver, or outside of those two. And I started to notice there wasn't a lot of women in any of these environments. So as I'm like starting to figure out my career and as I'm starting to build my company and as I'm like, you know, um, uh, designing things and, and, and putting out services for, for my clients, I'm also paying attention to this spectrum of where are all the other women who are starting their businesses, running their businesses, doing awesome shit, being creatives, where are they? So this was something that started to brew and by the end of like 2012, I had met so many amazing colleagues that a couple of us said, well maybe we should start like a little group for, for female entrepreneurs. And so like three of us like kicked off this tiny little group January 2013 and that little group even though our team dispersed which is fine and natural and it's normal um, evolved into today what is women who start up so um, at the time it was like a little female entrepreneurs group at the mm -hmm. beginning of 2013 mm -hmm. in September 2013 was the second Denver startup week and I was like I'm gonna coin I'm gonna coin an event, and I called it Women in Tech. Mm -hmm. And like th three or four weeks before <laughs> Denver Startup Week actually took place in September of, t of 2013, one of the organizers sent me an email and said, uh, we hate to tell you this, but there's another conflicting event with the name Women in Tech. It's by a large organization, which was the phenomenal NC Wit organization, which I have profound respect for. It, it was what it was. And so I said, give me an hour, I'll figure out a new name, and a new focus. And I was like, women in tech, women, <laughs> blah, 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 <laughs> you know, words, 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 words. And I was like, women who start up. And I literally, I started doing like, cause I'm like a mm -hmm. branding junkie. Mm -hmm. So I literally, I started going to like the copyright website tests, you know, I was like, you know, the patents <clears> and trademarks. Mm -hmm. I was like, women who start up. I was like, women who start I was like, holy <laughs> shit, this doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Talk about a kick right in the proverbial creative, you know, Focus. Uh, backpack, yeah, <laughs> but, um, but I was like, whoa, women who start up. So I wrote them back and I said, my event's called Women Who Start Up. Out of a mistake, something brilliant came about mm -hmm. and it took me a couple of hours to go Women Who Start Up and that event, I hadn't planned really. I was really planning just to have a small panel with um, some female entrepreneurs on stage and that first event for Women Who Start Up was I think attracted mm -hmm. just shy of like 300 people in attendance. So that was what? That was four Denver Startup Weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are in 2016. Yeah. We're one of the headline events to this day. Right. This past September 2016, 
I believe we had nearly 700 people in attendance. Mm -hmm. Last year we had um, similarly six or 700 people in attendance. Um, uh, it has grown into and grown up a little bit into what was at, at that time just an event um, and an evolution of wanting to inspire and attract you know, female entrepreneurs. That literally has turned into an actual organization mm -hmm. and an entity that has one huge mission. Mm -hmm. Build a profoundly and global community for female entrepreneurs, innovators, and adventurers so that they can learn from each other, collaborate, network, and have ha access to resources including capital. Mm -hmm. I have a bit of a bias towards writing women back into history because women have always been a part of the story we may have just left them out of the story a little bit. And not on my watch, no more. <laughs> because I have a lot to uh -huh. learn from other women, uh -huh. and younger women have a lot to learn from those women who have climbed before them. So a lot of our branding has to do with being the climber, the mm. entrepreneur, the mm -hmm. climber. Yeah. Um, and keep climbing is definitely yeah. our slogan, our philosophy. Um, right. Even if you have to make a million left turns, mm -hmm. you know, you keep going. Even if keep going means you stop and take a second and, and figure your shit out. Yeah. And figure out what's, yeah. this is maybe not for me. Yep. Get down that mountain. Take a break. Mm -hmm. Check out if another one is yeah, for you Yeah, might be the not. wrong mountain. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> not all yeah. mountains are alike, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Women Who Start Ops Evolution. Um, yeah. And uh, it literally came out of passion. It really is about investing in women mm -hmm. so that they can learn from each other because women build mm -hmm. some of the most diverse companies mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. impacts and is valuable to yeah. everyone. There's a lot of energy there with women who start up. It's its own kick in a way because yeah. it, there's just a lot of, I think, pent up energy behind the yeah. mission that is there with women who start up. And it, as you mentioned, it sort of, uh, it seems to benefit everyone in that regard uh, in a number of ways, including the bottom line yep. when you have a more diverse uh, workforce and mm -hmm. leadership uh, mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, diversity is not taking a bunch of people in the room that look different and think different and expect them all to mm. just get along mm -hmm. and build something great. Diversity yeah. is mm -hmm. leadership who understands and appreciates that I have to bring in people, hire people, find people mm -hmm. who don't look like me and think like me. Mm -hmm. And that being a very, very, very powerful and empowering thing for my team, for my company, mm -hmm. my organization, whatever. Mm -hmm. But making sure that they are still complementary with one or two or three mm -hmm. very clear objectives and goals right. that are aligned. Yeah. Diversity is never going to work. This is why we have so much change management crisis when it comes to diversity. Companies are looking at it all different. No, you don't just go pick a bunch of things off the shelf. We're human <laughs> beings. Yeah. We still have to be complementary. Yeah. But diversity is important because what you think and what I think, mm -hmm. if it's always the same, how are we innovating? You're not going to see your blind spots. Mm -hmm. so we're not going to see our blind spots yeah. is a great way of putting it. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're not going to think from other people's perspectives, experiences, needs, pains, yeah. pain points, etc. And so our products are not going to be creative as it could be. Our value is going to be marginalized. And to me, that's boring. It's boring. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, a vintage, it's a vintage way to live. It's a vintage way to run your company. Uh, this is not about you know clocking in and clocking out and all that kind of baloney. This is about valuing people and saying, you're great at X, you're great at Y. We're contributing to the same goals and objectives because my leadership is clear and concise and we're all running towards the same goal and objective and we appreciate each other. That's great. That's leadership. That's the first start. Diversity is, should become second nature. Um, it effectively is the evolution of my first company, MSpot, and basically it is my creative umbrella for technology, innovation, and diversity. Mm -hmm. So effectively is where I work with clients or I work on um, technology products. So I have Effectively Labs where I'm working currently on Effectively Hire, which is I'm experimenting with an HR technology um, marketplace that connects people into opportunity in real time mm -hmm. with the hope of amplifying 
um, companies who are hiring great people and looking for great people, giving them a great diverse spectrum of talent yeah. rather than um, just giving them a bunch of the same yeah. that they are already finding. That's interesting. You're not just preaching the, the line. You're saying, well, here's, how, really, we can, yeah, here's really how we can do it. Yeah, I'm really know? trying to build something also. Um, and so I'm tinkering with that. It has a little bit of my attention. I'd like mm -hmm. to give it a lot more of my attention. Um, but naturally, you know, you're finding co-founders, you're finding funding sources and um, figuring that out. Um, balancing effectively, which is my technology and creative outlet, which is really my passion for product development and Women Who Start Up, which is my uh, passion for giving back and investing in women because I am a female founder. I know how hard it is to get capital still. Don't care how you think of it, it still is. Uh, crowdfunding is your friend. Uh, <laughs> um, so balancing those two is an act of discipline, but I think it's, n it's not for most people. But for people like me, high velocity, craving to be creative all the time, I really love that. You can learn more about Women Who Start Up and join us, whether it's events mm -hmm. or uh, anywhere mm -hmm. in the world, you can jump on our Slack uh, community. Website address? Yeah, womenwhostartup.com. You just got to check us out, womenwhostartup.com. Um, if, you if you're interested about Effectively and what I'm building there, effectively.co.co. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Excellent. That's that. Uh, folks, thanks for joining us today at Battery 621. I'm Kyle Eason. This is Lizelle Van Buren. Van, Van Buren, excuse me, Lizelle Van Buren. <laughs> uh, and also for Mile High House, thanks so much and have a great day. Appreciate it.